Speaking of that in terms of the offense, Andy Hart. Yes. I want to know from you. Ooh, I like this. The Thanks. keepers on offense. So if you are in the room with Elliot Wolf, Could be a short segment. <laughs> and he ter- t- turns to you and says, Hart, we're going to go through all these guys on the offensive roster. Are we doing it just gladiator style? Thumbs up, thumbs down? A all little bit, yeah. A okay. little, yeah, uh, a little bit. Just keep bit. or go? Yeah, pretty much, right? Like okay. in terms of who, now again, this is really independent of, of contract, things like that. Not like Jacoby Myers. Oh, I kind of like him, but they offered him what in wherever? Fine. Okay. And you know what? And if you want to keep a guy like that who you know is going to be a free agent, then you could, you know, you can choose to go there. All okay. Right? Mac, keep. Here, here next, keep. Absolutely keep. Give him a coach and see what happens. Don't know if he's a franchise quarterback, but keep. Ramondre. Oh, absolutely keep. Lock him up now. Damian Harris. Uh, he can go. I'm not Ooh. using a spot. If you limit me in any way to spots, Damien. So that means I you're. I bid you adieu. So we putting. So that means you're putting a stamp of approval on Kevin Harris and Pierre Strong. Fair? I kind of like that three headed monster, Stevenson, Harris, and Strong. Okay, I'm all for that law firm. All right, Hunter Henry, keep. Jonu Smith, he's he's gone. Yeah, I, uh, I don't see what he brings to the table. Devonte Parker. Ooh, that is a tough one. Keep. Okay. Kendrick Bourne. Peace. Nelson Aguilar. Peace. Tyquan Thornton, or as Jonathan Vilma called him, Tyrone Thornton, Tyran Thornton. Um, I know I he's going to be here. He's going to be here. I have not. He is one of the most dramatic uh, opinion changes I've had this year. I really liked him this summer. Yeah. I thought he was the best young receiver they have had come through a training camp and look ready to maybe contribute and run routes and all these things. I could not be more disappointed what I've seen from him in like the last month. He has fallen off a map. He doesn't catch the ball. He doesn't get any separation. He doesn't seem tough. He at times seems to alligator arm it if there's anybody in his vicinity. How much of that is this offense that he's playing in? See, and that is the the dark cloud that hangs over almost all of these guys. Agreed. Like, Cole Strange. We didn't get to him yet, and he's a rookie. He's going to be here. But would Cole Strange be better if Dante Scarnecchia were coaching the offensive line? Because Matt Patricia's coaching the offensive line with Billy Yates. So if I'm going to give a pass to Mac Jones and say you can't grade Mac Jones, don't I have to give a pass to most of the offensive line who's being coached by a defensive well, coordinator? Well, I, I think there is there's a big element of that, no question. And that's, you know, in a way, that's what we're kind of getting to. Trent Brown, back next year or not? Uh, I'm ready to move on from him. Okay. I see effort issues with him, and I don't know that I can blame effort issues on Matt Patricia. Agreed. Like, if you're not, if you're disinterested and you're not engaged, then that's on you as a professional. And quite honestly, they've now seen the Trent Brown that I think the Raiders saw, the 49ers saw, the talented but not always all-in kind of guy. Right, even did. though he played with the trots or whatever was going on against Buffalo and it, it was sick as all hell. Okay. Yeah, there's inconsistency. There's a real issue with consistency with him. Yes. I'm with you. Cole Strange. Absolutely back, and and I think he probably has upside. Get him in the weight room. David Andrews. Absolutely. Mike Keep. Onwenu. Keep. Isaiah Wynn. Whoever you say at the next position, no. Thank you. Yadney could just. Nope, nope, nope. Connor McDermott. Nope, nope, nope. What about the guy from Michigan who was on uh, long-term IR? Oh, Stuba. The, yeah, Stuber. Stuba. Maybe Stuba's got a chance. Well, everybody thought so. He hasn't so. screwed up. No, he hasn't. That's a step up for, for his competition with all the rest of those guys. You know how they say, a better the world to think you're a fool than to go out there and prove it? Sure. All the other guys have proven they're fools at right tackle. Stuber has not proven his foolishness. So... You're talking about getting rid of two wide receivers, two tackles, and that's really about it. Oh, I'm a big believer if you add a— Oh, Jacoby Myers. I'm assuming you want Myers back. I would like him back. He's the weird one that gets into, I'm not paying him. I'm not paying him. What is paying him? Uh, anything north of— You give him $6 million next year? Sure. Seven? Yeah, I don't approach Eight? double digits and go beyond. Nope, sorry. Wish you well in your future endeavors. Okay, so seven, seven and a half would be yeah. the most you would they be have, willing to stretch to. If you can fix your books, you'll have some money to waste on skill position players. And I say waste because I think you're going to have to overpay to keep him. But if I can waste money on Jonu Smith and waste money on Nelson Aguilar, I know I'm going to get more out of Myers. 
He's not a number one. He's Fair. probably not even a number no, two. That makes sense. But sometimes you overpay to keep your guys that you like. And I know he just crapped his pants with the game on the line. But he's one of your best offensive players, reliable, stand-up guy. I think I think good teams have Jacoby Myers on them, like that type of guy. You know, the, John o. Smith will be polarizing in part because the Patriots are in on him in terms of money. Oh, you yeah. know, it would be, I think, at best a wash if you moved on from him. But there is the, if you bring in a competent offensive mind. Now, I know they couldn't figure out with McDaniels. Nope. Apparently, McDaniels was not uh, very much into embracing those tight ends, I guess. He did Hunter Henry, especially in the red area. Well, I think he embraced John U. Smith early on, and then I think he realized. Didn't trust him. Like, we're just, you know, what is it, uh, bad money after good or whatever? Like, he realized yeah, yeah. at some point, we're not going to get return on this investment that we thought we were going to get. This guy is not a transformational. Because I think he was brought in to be a centerpiece of the offense. Correct. And he, he learned pretty quickly, this is not a centerpiece of well, the offense guy. And there's the Matt Patricia piece of this, who was supposed to use him more, and we haven't seen any of that. Yep. Nope. But Matt Patricia can't get people in and off the field. Remember so. when Robert said we now have, we're now going to get better return on investment in some of these players? A little, I thought it was a dig at Josh offensively. Right. Hasn't really worked out. No, it Big has. year for Smith, big year for Aguilar, big year. Oh, wait, no, Hunter Henry actually regressed, so the return on the investment has actually gotten worse. So when you really look at it, it's adding more wideouts, which, again, that's every year, I think, in New England. Give me a number one wideout and give me a tackle. But it's finding maybe not one but two tackles. See, I even – you can talk me into Trent Brown. I've seen him play well here at a really high level, a Pro Bowl level. He's also cheap next at, year, too. And at one of the tackles, maybe if you bring in an elite left tackle and you put Trent Brown back at right tackle, we all feel better. Maybe that's the solution. Maybe he feels underpaid at, at left tackle. You kind of bamboozled me. You signed me to be a right tackle, and now I'm playing left. I should be making more. Wah, 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 wah. Well, yeah. So I, I think if you added a Pro Bowl caliber tackle, and a Pro Bowl caliber wide receiver, there would be a lot of improvement, a lot of dominoes, a lot of sort of falling into place on this roster, assuming that it comes with a new offensive coordinator scheme play caller. Those three things. If you're going to do a to-do list, you don't want to go too deeper than three points on a to-do list because we all know it looks overwhelming and then we go take a nap because we're, we, we don't want to do the whole totality. To-do list, new play caller, new guy running the offense, Give me a Pro Bowl caliber tackle. Give me a Pro Bowl caliber wide receiver. I think this offense would 50% improve, 60% improve. And I do think Trent Brown, and I just looked it up, cap number for next year, $7.75 million. If I in slide terms, that into right tackle? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're you're okay there. Yes, no, sir. I'm, I'm with you. However, you got to go, you know, young and uh, young and hostile at left tackle. And good. Not because right, if Trent, not a. If, if Trent Brown is at right tackle at a good number, but uh, whatever, the wheels fell off. Okay, now I figure out whether it's Stuber or whoever's next in line. The problem is, it feels like they've been trying to figure out two tackle spots all year long. Well, everybody is of the you can just find them. Right. This is the proof that you you can't just find these guys off the street. There are some teams that survive with those guys, but if you're looking for people that you can really count on. It's normally either someone that you bring in, and again, like Stuber, hurt, non-football injury, get him in the building, get him three hots and a cot, that kind of deal. Hope that you can develop it. People think you can count on that, though. I'll just go find a guard in the fifth round. Can it be done? Yes. Is it done all the time? Nope. Was also easier to count on when Dante Scarnecchia was the developmental that's coach. That's a very not the defensive coordinator. That's a very salient point to all of this. So when you really think about it, that from a personnel standpoint, they might not be that far away. No, but just for me, now I flip the script on myself. So all I need is a good offensive coordinator, not the easiest thing to find. Yep. A Pro Bowl caliber tackle. Not the easiest thing to find unless Correct. you really want to pay $100 million for it. And a Pro Bowl caliber receiver. Again, not the easiest thing to find when, oh, by the way, the best receiver on the market might be Jacoby Myers. You may need to get creative finding this Pro Bowl caliber talent. Odell Beckham. Okay. I'm open. Uh, is he still a Pro Bowl caliber talent? We could have Rich Keefe, I know, would well, say yes. Well, there's, there's a lot of these wide receivers on, that yeah. are in and out of being Pro Bowl caliber talent. It depends on what year it but is. But you know who, who the type of guy that intrigues me like a uh, McLaurin? Terry McLaurin, who I think is a stud receiver 
who's just kind of in Washington, and there's different quarterbacks around him, and he's in Washington, and they're, you know, competing for maybe a playoff spot. I feel like he's the type of guy that you bring him into a good offense with a good quarterback and good stability with, like, all of a sudden you'd go, wow, that guy really has been playing in anonymity in Washington. Well, I'll be honest. I think part of the allure of potentially bringing in Bill O'Brien is if there you would like to think if there's anybody who would have a handle on the type of wide receivers that would profile for Bill to like, but also maybe be a little different than the ones that are on the roster, you'd like to think that considering the two years of college football that guy's seen, he might be able to pick pick a wide receiver. Yeah. You'd like to think so. I'll take a Jamison Williams or a Jalen Waddle or one of those types. I'd be happy to add that to the top of the deck. But if shot. you had one of those or uh, Laramie Tunsil – you know, at left tackle, minus being old uh, Smokey when he was coming out, old, uh, you would face think mask. that you would think that Gas Bill mask. might be thinking tackle before wide receiver. Yeah, I need both with a though. first round pick. That's the thing. It's not an both. either or; it's a both. Bill feels like Figure it's it out. back to the veteran route at wide receiver, but it is interesting to walk through that and the whole like there are guys who are like, yeah, and you might hold your nose a little bit. But Trent Brown coming back at seven and a half million and maybe being a right tackle is not the worst option. And make you just got to get it right. You're talking about draft or veteran. So everybody was mocking the Packers. They let Devontae Adams go. Where are you getting wide receivers from? Christian Watson's come on a little bit, even though he, of course, had a little snafu. But he's still a rookie. Second half of the year, he's done great. And Dobbs has looked good now that he's healthy. Like if they, those Dobbs guys is going to be the player. Those guys are Mac Jones like. Like their arrows are pointing up. You're if you're a Packers fan, I think you're excited about those two receivers heading into next season.